All right, with this video, I want to go and start talking about comparator circuits. This is one of those things that um, I'm not sure if we talk a whole lot about in class, but it's a super useful circuit. And uh, so you have a basic one. This is taken from a book um, from the 90s, the circuit that you see uh, from the, uh, the comparator book with 49 projects by Delton T. Horn, published by Tab Books in 1990. So one of the things I want to do before we get any further is to make a correction. So I spent probably about an hour and a half yesterday uh, figuring out why my circuit was working backwards. And I realized this is pin five and this is pin four. So this is the uh, LM339 quad comparator. And uh, yeah, so fun times. Uh, overall, the circuit is uh, kind of a very basic uh, circuit that shows how the um, comparator actually functions. So the schematic symbol looks like an op amp, and you could actually use an op amp as a comparator. But as I'll show you in just a second, it's uh, they're not as good at high frequency. Um, there's a bunch of other uh, reasons, uh, one of which is the output of a comparator can be... Uh, have different uh, configurations. Uh, so let's just jump into the basic block diagram of the comparator, which is the one here on the left. And then this is the uh, block diagram of the 741 op amp. So this is a 741 op amp. This is the LM339 comparator. We'll just call it comp. Now you can see the comparator is significantly simpler. Uh, it's basically a component that's built for one purpose. It's just comparing two input voltages. It's uh, essentially a differential amplifier, whereas the op amp, the 741 op amp, which is kind of your jelly bean op amp that everybody learns uh, on, uh, can be uh, configured to do multiple things. It can be a differential amplifier, inverting, non-inverting, uh, all kinds of things. And it can be a comparator but it's, uh, it's not designed for high frequency, whereas the comparator is uh, designed to be in the very high frequencies, uh, even down into the, um, the single nanosecond and below range. So this is a device that has uh, a lot of uses. It's one of those circuits that has a lot of fun applications, has a lot of interesting applications, and uh, but a lot of times we never really get beyond the basic circuit. Uh, it's like, you know, here's the theory, you go figure it out. So I uh, just want to kind of go through, uh, probably keep it a little low on the math, but, you know, you can't really avoid it. Uh, so basically, let's look at the um, R1, R2 first. So this is the, um, how you set the reference. So, all right, so let's just do a real quick math. So the basic math of this is that your V out, V out equals your gain, so this is going to be your open loop gain, times V, yeah, times V positive minus V negative. And that's it. So this is basically just your, your ordinary open loop differential amplifier. So an open loop is where you have no feedback going. To, uh, so like feedback would be, you know, maybe uh, negative feedback would be that. So this actually has none. So this is basically a binary device so i want it to output either a high or low voltage and i want it to do that based off of the conditions of the two voltages and the gain is since this is open loop we can consider it as infinite so which is uh basically a, a fancy way of saying it's very high and, and uh, in the case of like you know a small nine volt swing that it might as well be considered infinite it's usually like you know in the hundreds of thousands of uh, uh, times gain. So whatever small little difference that, you know, whatever V plus minus V minus equals times like 200,000 is it's going to be high. So it's even if it's just a small single millivolt, you know, you're, you're going to saturate the device and it's going to go to the uh, VCC or um, as far to ground as it, it, it can. So the first circuit we're going to look at is the R1 and R2. So R1 equals R2, in our case, equals 10 kilo ohms. 
and this is just a simple uh, equal voltage divider so the v positive equals one half in this case uh, nine volts equals 4.5 volts and then over here we have uh, the other voltage divider we have r3 and r5 uh, you can think of them as like uh, boundaries and in our case they're 4.7k so it basically keeps the potentiometer from going all the way to vcc and going all the way to ground and uh, it looks like you've got three resistors, but you can actually think of this as two resistors stacked up on top of each other that vary. So you could have the top half could be R3 plus, let's just say, the top half of R, R4, or the top portion, I should say. And then the other, and let's call that, I don't know, let's call that Rx. So that'll be like this, Rx. And then we'll just call this Ry. So if you want to figure out the voltage range, that's going to be at your V minus. Um, yeah, the V minus input here. You can just do a simple voltage divider when the potentiometer is zero ohms and 10 ohms. So our Ry is going to be R5 plus the bottom portion of R4. So let's say that the wiper of the potentiometer is down all the way at the bottom so that Ry equals R5, then that would mean Rx equals R3 plus R4. Then you would just plug that into the voltage the divider equation and uh, you get your uh, voltage ranges. Uh, so you'd, you'd do the same thing, then you would uh, obviously Ry would equal R5, it's supposed to be an R, plus R4, and then Rx just equals R3. So this will give you the uh, maximum range of V minus. Now, another thing that I want to talk about uh, before we actually just dive into the circuit is that comparators really need um, a little bit of feedback. So we're just, we're just going to whack in resistor from the output. We're actually going to do what's called positive feedback. The reason we do that is that it will, we'll see it much more on the oscilloscope uh, when, uh, so if you look at the, the equation V equals G times V plus minus V minus, Whenever V plus is roughly equal or pretty close to V minus, uh, your equation will turn out to be um, zero or almost zero. Uh, but what happens is that this will sometimes uh, just in the, uh, the floating or you know the somewhat drift of the, the input voltages, uh, sometimes it'll actually be above the threshold, sometimes it'll be below the threshold. So your V out will kind of oscillate between uh, you know, the, the total nine volts, uh, or zero volts. And so, you know, just do it graphically. It would just kind of look like this and just look a lot of jumble and then go back up and it'll jumble and be back up. So it's uh, basically just preventing oscillation. So whenever that this is, uh, that your input threshold of V net V, v minus rises above V plus, we want that first, that first state of, uh, triggering, to supply a little bit of voltage back into R2, and that will actually reset the voltage, the uh, VRF voltage, for V plus rep voltage. Now, and that is kind of easy. It's It looks kind of complicated, but if we actually redraw, let's call this R6. So let's just redraw R1, uh, just this resistor network. And so this is R1, it's supposed to be ground. That's R2. And this is, we'll just do this. So we can think of the output of the comparator as basically another tiny little battery. So in this case, we have R6. Oh, and up here, we've got nine volts. So I've already actually gone and measured the output from the so this is going to be this is v out here and this is going to be v plus so i've already gone and physically measured so it's going to be either 6.5 volts or 0 0.48 volts at v and or uh, sorry v naught and it's a fairly straightforward way 
Let me, if I can just redraw this so that it's a little bit more obvious. So this circuit will quickly, for those of you who are, have already taken the basic circuit analysis class, this is going to look really familiar, almost obnoxiously so. This is one of those fun things where there's some homework problems that they just they just feel like a homework problem. Right? They don't feel like anything real. It's just you know somebody made up a, a problem just to get you to go through the the you know, I don't know the rigors of uh, of electronics or whatever. So this actually is just a, a very simple so look at the circuit again and so we replace the uh, v naught or the v out as a tiny little battery that goes between 6.5 and 0 0.48 volts then uh we can actually so this is going to be 6.5 volts or 0 0.48 volts so let's just call this, so we'll call this V plus, and I want to figure out what happens when my uh, V out, well, let's just call it V out there, is either 6.5 or 0 0.48. How does that affect the voltage divider of R1 and R2, or the, the V positive? So if I just cover up this, uh, so if I just ignore everything to the right, this is just a regular voltage divider. You got nine volts going through R1 and R2, and your V plus is 4.5 volts. But what I'm doing is applying some positive feedback. So the um, circuit, the 100K, and the output from the comparator actually will change the, the V+. Plus. And so we can actually do this the smart way or the dumb way. So we could use mesh analysis, in which case we would actually go through, we would label this I1. And uh, since I know this is 6.5 and this is going to be 4.5, now the current's going to want to go this way. I can call that I2. And there we have two unknowns, but we're really just solving for V+. plus. So we really just have one unknown. So we're going to use nodal analysis. I could go through the, the entire process of the mesh analysis, but eh, it's obnoxious, and it gets the pretty much the exact same values. So who cares? So we're going to do it the smart way. So we look at, so we're all we're looking at is the V+. plus. So on the left-hand side of that R1, I've got nine volts minus V plus over 4.7. We're gonna keep it at 4.7. My answer is gonna be in milliamps. And uh, so nodal, we're gonna say the current's going this way, current's going that way, and the current's going that way. So let's see, I've also got, so I've got plus the current coming through the 100K is going to be 6.5 volts minus V plus over 100 equals V plus over 4.7. So in this case, this is R1, this is R2, and this is R6. So I'm going to do the real lazy way, and I'm going to type in my calculator, I'm going to type solve all this equation. So uh, 9 minus, I'm just going to 9. 9 minus, I'm just going to call it V, over 4.7, plus 6.5, minus V, oops, over 100, equals V, over 4.7, comma, solve for V. And it's the back answer of, drum roll please, V plus equals 4.55 volts. Just not too bad, measured. I got... 4.6 volts so that's not too far off and so we would do this so basically what happens is that if we, if i didn't have the 100k my v plus would be uh, 4.5 volts uh, but with the with the comparator uh, putting out 6.5 volts or it's basically you know it's putting out zero volts and the uh, so we have at this point is Four point, or is rather six point five volts. It's not nine volts because, oops, it's not nine volts. Put because we've got a voltage drop across the diode, of uh, I think it was two point five, two point five volt drop, and then we've got uh, the rest of it is uh, six point five volt drop across that.
So what's going to happen whenever the comparator actually turns on, so whenever this equation, whenever V out equals the gain times V plus minus V minus, so if I've got, let's just say my, my reference is 4.55, and that's, yep, my reference is 4.55. Now, as long as my voltage is less than that, and this is going to output a high voltage. So, which means if it's outputting a high voltage, then my LED is not actually going to turn on. And so, whenever my, whenever my V minus is greater than V plus, that's when my, uh, output will actually uh, be out equals let's just say low so if, if v out is low up here then you, you can see that it would complete the circuit base so it's going to tie it to ground and then the current can actually flow through the comparator and my led is going to turn on now the what the positive feedback will do is that so what will be measured at the V out will be 0 0.48 volts. And so what happens is that that voltage is actually used to change the reference voltage. So if I do this same equation, so I just, uh, let's see. Yeah, so if I do 9 volts minus V positive over R1, 4.7, plus 6.5, 0 0.48 volts over 100, so it's equals V positive over 4.7. So then I put that into my calculator. I get V plus equals yeah, 4.4 volts uh, measured equals 4.3 volts. So that's close enough. So basically what happens is that, as we'll see in the actual schematic, in the actual circuit, is that this helps from uh, oscillating. So if you can imagine if my voltage is really close, if my uh, V plus is close to V minus, what's going to happen is that it'll be like up here and then it'll Want to, it'll want to switch, then it'll maybe settle, then it'll oscillate, then it'll go up like that, and then it'll basically just oscillate rapidly. And so what happens is that this, if we put the positive feedback, so if this is my, yeah, so the positive feedback will basically eliminate that oscillation. And we'll just uh, give me either a solid high or a solid low. All right, so this is the actual circuit built. And I've got a whole lot of test equipment hooked up to it. Um, so <laughs> it's actually a little bit to wor work through. Uh, so this is just the uh, R3. I think this is R3 and this is R4. This one's R5. And uh, here you can actually see this one is R6. And uh, uh, one of these two is R, I think this is R1. This is R2, I believe. And so here's here's the uh, output pin and then going to the LED, going through uh, whatever number of resistor that was, R5 maybe. And so this is actually going through a current meter. All right, so let's take a look at the schematic in action. All right, I've got the circuit built and I've got, uh, well, a large amount of test equipment hooked up to it. Uh, I want to so show a bunch of things simultaneously. So I've got the XTEC multimeter is measuring the current through the load, uh, which is just a resistor and an LED. I've got the EEV blog meter, that's actually measuring the reference voltage. And then I've got the Fluke measuring the input voltage. Over here, I have the Keysight multimeter measuring the output voltage at the comparator. So you can see I've got, uh, so if you follow the equation, V out equals uh, v reference minus V in times the gain. So our output voltage, uh, so this is actually less than the uh, VCC, which is, you can see the Rigel, it's nine volts because of the LED. The LED has about a, a 2.4 volt drop across it. So you have, to, you have to keep that in mind when you're looking at the voltage. So if I actually took the LED out of the circuit and just had the resistor, this would show the, essentially the 9.01 volts. So I am going to rotate the potentiometer. 
So, uh, so we'll actually watch this change. Uh, you'll see this rise if I turn it in the right direction. And once it crosses the threshold, once it actually becomes larger than that, it should turn the LED on. Um, and at that point, it turns the LED on. And you can see it has about 12 milliamps flowing through. And the reference voltage is still about 4.5. And that changed a little bit uh, because of some loading. And you can see the input is uh, just a little bit over our reference. So I can actually keep turning that. And you can see, well, let's say if I turn it in the right direction. So if I keep increasing the input voltage, you can see the output voltage doesn't really change. It changes a, a little bit, but pretty, that's pretty stable. Again, if I drop it back, right there, now it's off. See, there is a problem, however. Let's see if I can get this right at the switching point. Let's see. Yeah. So the problem is when we can actually uh, look at the oscilloscope, I'll just put a picture of it up. Uh, so when our reference and our input voltage are just about the same, it, uh, it will actually have this, this rapid uh, transition. You'll actually see where the, the circuit wants to change, but then it drops and it picks back up, drops, pick, picks back up. Uh, so this is actually uh, an, an undesirable um, point in the circuit becomes uh, unstable. Now you can see there's a whole lot of basically false triggering or multiple triggering. So if I see if I can zoom in. So you can see in just one of those pulses there's multiple multiple uh, false triggering. Now here you can see the LED flickering because it's not fully on, it's not fully off, it's somewhere in between. It's uh, actually in state of oscillation. So this is the undesirable state, especially for the comparator, which is a binary device. We want it to be fully on or fully off. So the oscillation is not desirable. So one of the ways to take care of that is to actually add in a little bit of positive feedback. So I'm gonna start by putting in a small little 100K resistor. So I'm gonna put that in between the middle of the voltage divider that uh, creates our reference. And I'm gonna put that to the output of the comparator. See, now I'm violating my rule of don't work on a circuit while it's operating or while it's powered. But I did it successfully. So the result is that they're uh, some of the output voltage is actually brought back to the uh, reference voltage and it actually uh, will, will change. So it cleans up a little bit of, actually it cleans up quite nicely. Uh, I'll include the picture in the, uh, of the oscilloscope as well. And you can see that it raised the, temp yeah, it raised the temperature, it raised the reference point. So if I continue to rotate it, let's see if I can do it in the right direction this time. So if I raise that up, raise that up, so watch what will happen with the reference when I get that close to the 5 point or 4.599. Well, see now I made one transition. So I raised the input voltage uh, above the previous set point. And now that I'm taking some of the voltage back and feeding it into the reference and that is actually dropping it back, uh, dropping the set point. So in order for this to turn off, I actually have to change the input voltage to below this for it to uh, turn back off. And then you'll see what happens when that happens. If I can turn in the right direction. So as they get to just about equal, so, now I have my input voltage set at my previous reference, uh, but now 
it's uh, raised back up to its original set point. So this is what is uh, is a, uh, essentially a Schmidt trigger, but this we're actually using as a it's not as so much a Schmidt trigger as we're using some positive feedback to um, eliminate noise, eliminate false triggering when the two inputs are, are close together. Uh, so it is a Schmidt trigger, but we're not using it to be a Schmidt trigger. We're still using it as a comparator, but we're using some positive feedback to uh, eliminate the oscillations. All right, now if I change, let's see, I'm gonna pull out that resistor, that 100K resistor. Then I'm gonna whack in a one mega ohm resistor. See what the effect of that is. Again, we're doing this with it powered on, which is what you shouldn't do. All right, so that raised the original set point a little bit, not as much. And so if I increase the input voltage, oh, did that a little too fast. So if I increase it up to 4.51, oh, and there we go. So the same principle, so 4.5, uh, but now my new reference voltage is not as uh, it's not as dramatic. It's not as much of a difference. So again, I have to actually reset the input voltage to below my new set point, and then it turns off. So it all has to do with how much of a how much of a difference do you need. All right, this is the end of the first video. I'm going to continue this series on comparators to hopefully do some interesting circuits. I uh, hope you join me for the next ones.